video I'll be demonstrating retainers within Colleague and how you can get them set up from an admin's perspective. So how you get them set up is you make sure you're in the admin section within Colleague and then you go to the option where it says global settings. Once you've done that you type in here retainers it will basically bring up all the options regarding retainers. The first option says allow the use of retainers within a requirement. If this is selected to no, you won't be able to basically create retainers from a requirement record and the tab along the top that says retainers won't be there and also the option where it says use of retainers and own company won't be there either. If you select the second option, this one basically says default for use of retainers in requirement. So basically this option here where it says use retainers um, if this is if you select no on the option it means that the default setting will always be no and then if you wanted to create one you'd have to manually change it to yes and then the, the retainers options will appear at the top the third option down basically says use back office for retainers in requirements this is basically if you'd like to create an invoice off the back of a retainer and how, and basically where you do that is in the back office section within colleague so if you would like to do that you can select that as yes and the retainers tab label basically in here you can pop in whatever you'd like the tab along the top of the requirement record to be called to so say for example you'd like to change it to milestone or anything like that you can pop that in here and that will change the name of the retainers tab within a requirement record once you're happy and you've selected just all of those um, if you go back to the admin section and basically select where it says user group permissions and then go down to where it says admin and then in here if you go to where it says requirement there is one option here where it says add slash edit retainers grant the ability to edit retainers this would need to be set to full access as well if you'd like to use retainers or actually won't be able to edit them within the requirement record so once you've selected all of those you should be ready to be able to edit and create retainers within a requirement record in this next part of the video, I'll be demonstrating how you can create a retainer and all the options you have within that retainer and if you would like to invoice off the back of that retainer, how you do that from the back office as well. So firstly, make sure that you're on the requirement you would like to create the retainer for and make sure that the option that you may have selected no as the default within the admin section is selected as yes or else it won't allow you to create the retainer and these two tabs won't appear. Then if you go to the retainers tab and go to the option where it says add retainer item, then it will give you some fields that you'd need to fill in the appropriate information regarding the retainer you'd like to create. So firstly, you'd need to select the users or the user groups that you would like for the retainer to be created for. Once you've done that, the next option, it says stage. So in this, it basically gives you a bunch of workflows within colleagues. So for example, long listing, short listing, CV, interviews, offers and placed. But I'll show you manual first. So the difference is with a manual stage, it basically isn't running from a workflow within colleague. It means that you'd manually have to mark this retainer as complete, which I'll show you shortly. So then once you're happy with that, you'll pop in the details of the retainer so first stage let's just pop that for now and then units is the amount of times they would need to complete the workflow that you're creating the retainer for so say for example let's just pop two and invoice value is how much they'd get paid once they've completed the task for this retainer and then if you select save you'll notice now that it's created a retainer for you with the units here and if I create another retainer and basically select again the user you would like the retainer to be created on behalf of and then if you select one of the workflows again let's just put longer listed in the description for now you'll notice that once you've popped in the applicable information so again how many units or how many times they'd need to long list a candidate in order to complete this retainer the amount you'll notice at the bottom you've got the option for auto complete so if you select yes on this option what will happen is once you've saved this retainer it will have the units and account and that will go up depending on how many times they've done that workflow so in this case they only have one unit so they only need to long list one candidate for this to be completed and once you have done that this should auto count that you've long listed a candidate against this requirement and basically when it's completed a date will stamp here so I'll show you this shortly so if you go to the candidates let's just long list a candidate for now 
let's just type in Smith look up anyone select that candidate has now been long listed against this requirement so if you go back to the retainers tab you'll notice the count has gone up and it is also automatically completed that retainer for you as the workflow has been completed as well however with the manual one if if they have done this workflow and they were happy to say that it's been completed you would need to manually select yes in the mark as complete section and then if you go back you'll notice now that it has a completed stamp okay so once you have completed the retainers you are able to actually invoice off the back of them so if you go to the back office section within colleague which is down here and then select generate invoice once you've done that if you filter the search by selecting retainers and then unselect and view all and then to filter it even more if you look up the specific company that's relevant to your requirement select lookup and then select the applicable company record and this will give you a list of all the retainers against this company so then if you select the applicable retainers and then you select generate invoices and then you input the applicable information here and select the drop downs and then once you're happy you can either create a separate invoice for expense invoices or if you're happy with just the one you just press OK and then you select yes if you'd like to view the invoices and then what you'll notice is there's two invoices here and then once you've created those you have the options to send them via email you can pay them off you can create a document off the back of them and you can download them anything like that okay so once you've finished invoicing those retainers if you head back to the requirement on the retainer tab you'll notice now that it has an invoice ID and it has an invoice date as well Another thing I'd like to add is if you were to do a workflow retainer, so again, a shortlist, CVs, interviews, offers or placed, any of these options here, and you would like for them to not auto-complete, if you keep it as a no, that way once you've completed the retainer, they'd have to manually come in and mark it as complete. You also have that option as well. Um, however, you have the option obviously for it to autocomplete based on the units of that particular workflow. I hope this helps.